Welcome. This is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Last night I had a dream, and in this dream, on the right-hand side, I saw this long highway. In the middle was a huge brown field. On the left-hand side was a car. And as I watched, the scenery panned in, and I was able to look at the car, and I saw letters on the side of the car which spelled out police on the middle of the dream i saw a large large white sign on the top was a rectangular shape and then it was based on a long pillar and the sign was pure white it reminded me of a beautiful white cloud there was no writing on it there was no signs on it it was just pure white then the sky was very beautiful and I woke up and I was thinking about that dream I think on the face of it it means that there are many many people Speeding motors going down the highway of life. Not realizing that they will have to give an account of their lives. You know how cops like to hide behind something and catch a speeding motorist? That's what cops do. Well, anyway, I, I said, Lord, what does that mean? And so I went back to sleep and I had another dream. And in this dream, I saw a big, huge piece of paper. It kind of reminded me of a comment section. And on the comments, I saw at the top, there were three asterisks on the left-hand side. And next to the asterisks was the words, the sky is unfolding. Dot, 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 dot. So, I think the Lord is saying that we are in the end times, which we all know that. But, I think that we need to be ready. God is telling us to be ready to make sure that our hearts and our lives are are ready to go to meet him and I was thinking about this book I read in the 1970s it was written by Dr. Richard Eby that's E-B-Y in case you want to look it up on YouTube or the internet and he tells of his experience he was coming out from the second balcony of his home and he was carrying this big box and he bumped into the railing he didn't realize that the railing had been eaten away by termites and so he fell from that second floor balcony right on top of his head and it killed him and he tells about how he was in heaven and spoke with Jesus and Jesus told him, tell them, tell them, tell them, I am coming soon. And then in his book, he tells about another experience that he had later on. Uh, the Lord sent him back to earth and healed him. It caused quite a sensation because they had taken him to the morgue. I mean, he was dead. But God healed him, and um, it tells about how later on he went on this trip to Israel. And during his visitation of Israel, he visited the tomb of Lazarus. And it was very, very dark in there, and he was with some other people. And he said that it just became very, very dark. It was a supernatural experience that he had while he was in there. 
But during this experience, Jesus took him to hell and showed him hell. And that horrible place is not good for anyone. But Jesus wanted him to share with this generation of what it is like to stand before God and to be judged. And it showed how he had to stand before this huge book. It was the book of life. And God showed him how it was like to be a sinner and being judged. And he said this hand was just turning those pages electronically fast. Pages, pages, pages flipping through. And his name was not found in the book of life. So he said... His soul was cast into the lake of fire. The Bible teaches us that hell will be cast into the lake of fire. And this fire will not be quenched. And he goes on to tell about the rest of his experience in hell. And which I won't go into the details of it here. But you can go look it up and you can watch the videos about it. But... Jesus told him to tell this generation, I am coming soon. So we need to make sure that our hearts are ready to go. And I've had so many people comment to me that Jesus has saved them, but they are living in sin. And this one lady got furious at me because she said I sin but God loves me he's not going to cast me into hell but the Lord teaches in his scripture that we're not supposed to go around committing sin we're not supposed to live a life of sin and a lot of these preachers are going around preaching that everyone sins and then I've heard about a lot of preachers committing fornication and that kind of a lifestyle isn't going to get you to heaven. Jesus tells us in his word in the book of Revelation, he said the fornicators and the adulterers, the liars, the thieves, they will not enter in to the kingdom of heaven. And we need to remember that. And the way to live a life free of sin is by reading God's word and praying every day. Jesus came to this earth. He died on a cross that we could be sin free. It says in the, um, if you do a, a word study of the names of God, I love looking up the names of God because it describes his character and one of his names is Jehovah Zidkanu that means the Lord who is my righteousness I know in our own righteousness we are as filthy rags but Jesus makes us righteous and Jesus says I am coming for a spotless wrinkle-free bride and we need to make sure that we're right with the Lord because Jesus said my coming is soon